This video is a tutorial for Google Drive for the iPad. Google Drive is a cloud storage service offering either free or paid tiers and ties in with their online range of productivity apps, including Google Docs, Google Slides and Google Sheets. Now I've made tutorials for all of those on the channel, so if you want to check those out, they'll be in the description below. This is going to be quite an in-depth overview of what this app can do. So if you're looking for something specific, as ever, in the description below, you'll find all the timestamps for all the different things I'm going to be talking about to let you skip to the bit that you want to see. So when you open up Google Drive, you'll need to sign in. And once you've done so, you're presented with this screen. So let's start by talking about the interface. There are a number of clickable areas. So we'll start in the top corner up here. With the three lines, we can click on that. That brings up one of the menus, which we'll talk about in a moment. We can search for different documents that we have in our cloud storage. Over in the top right, we can click on our picture and that brings up a few additional settings. Along the bottom, we've got different um, areas of storage to help us quickly find the things that we're looking for. And then we have this plus icon down here which allows us to create something or upload something to the drive. So they're the main clickable areas. Now let's go through and talk about what each one of these does. So if we go over to the top right corner of the screen and click on our picture again, this is the area in which we can sign into additional accounts. So we can do that by clicking on add another account. And once we've added multiple accounts, you can see I have here, you just click on each account to switch between them so you can easily go between your different Google Drive accounts if you have multiple accounts. Under manage accounts this is where we can remove the accounts from this device so if we want to take an account off we can just click on remove from this device and that's how you'll take the account away from this app. Now we're going to go over to the other side of the screen and click on this icon which is three lines and this brings up another menu. Uh, this offers us lots of different options so let's talk about it we're actually going to start at the bottom here where it says storage storage tells us how much space we've used and how much space we have left and if we click on that it brings up another screen here which allows us to view details of where the storage space is being used whether that's in your gmail account google photos or google drive you have the option at the bottom to buy more storage and you can click on that and it gives you a list of the storage available and how much that costs per month. Back on this menu, we have help and feedback. So if we can click on that, it takes us to a support system. So if we're having issues uploading um, or sharing files on Drive or whatever, you can use this support system to browse the articles and sort of try and troubleshoot what your problem is. You can also email Google directly and also send feedback. The next item on this menu is settings. Now there's a few different things we can do here. Under notifications, we can choose to have notifications enabled or not. So if I turn this on, it will give us a few additional options about what we want to be notified about. So we'll get notifications for if items are shared with us, if someone's requesting access, or if someone leaves comments on a file that we've shared with other people. Next, we have backup. And what this does is this will take the contents or some of the contents of your device and back them up to Google Drive. And it consists of three elements here. We can back up our contacts to Google Contacts. We can uh, take what's on our calendar on the iPad and upload that to Google Calendar. And we can back up our photos and videos to Google Photos. And that will take up space, whatever you've got on your Google Drive. But this is a backup system that is available to you. And if you want to start that, you can just click on or tap on Start Backup which is down in the bottom right corner. Next, we have default apps. So if we click on something in Google Drive, Google gives you the option of choosing which app opens it. 
So um, if you click on a link at the moment, you can set it to Safari, Google or Google Chrome if you have those installed. If you click on an email address, you can choose whether you want that to open in the default mail app or in the Gmail app. Um, and also with Maps, um, you can choose between Apple Maps, Waze and Google Maps. For Google Calendar, you can choose between the default calendar app or Google Calendar. And then it gives you a whole host of other apps from Google that you might want to uh, download. Also under the settings section is an option for Siri shortcuts. So you can specify a phrase and you can type it in here, what you want to say to Siri in order to be able to search for something in Google Drive. Next, we have notifications. So as we discussed before, if we turn on notifications for comments or access requests, those notifications will appear in this section here. And then the top three items on this menu um, give us access to different sections within Google Drive. So if I click on recent, it will display all of the recent files that we've been working on. If we click on offline, this will display items that we have chosen to make available on the iPad if we do not have an internet connection. And I'm going to come back and show you how to make a file available offline in just a little bit. And then finally, we have the bin. So if we delete something, it will go to the bin, which does give us a handy option of being able to restore it if we've deleted something by accident. So now let's take a look at the options along the bottom of the Google Drive app. So the first one's indicated is already selected, it's called Home. So this will just show us a bunch of files that we've been working on recently. The next section is for starred files. So you might have a bunch of documents that you need to access on a regular basis. And instead of just searching through the folders on Google Drive to try and find it, you can star a file, which is a bit like pinning it. Think of this as a notice board of some sort where we can pin our most used documents to. So what we do is we can star a document and then those documents will appear here. And I'll show you how to star a document in just a moment. The next icon, the third one along the bottom is for shared files. So if someone shared a file or a folder with you, these will appear here and you can just click on each one to access uh, the files within it. And lastly, we have our files. This is where all of the files and folders are. So this is the icon you'll click on if you want, actually want to set up a, a folder system or look through all of your folders or all of your files and see everything in one place. It's the file section of this app where you will find all of that. So whilst we're in the file section, let's have a look at some options in terms of viewing the files. If we move our eyes to this area up here, sort of near the top right, we can switch between list view or a grid view. And the grid view gives us a preview of, the, of what the files look like. But if you have a lot of files, it might be easier to switch to a simple list view. If we move over to the left, you can see this word here, it says name. This gives us some sorting options. If I click on the arrow, I can sort by the, the name. So in alphabetical order, when it was last modified, modified by me, last opened, and we can sort by file size as well. Now this file section of the app is actually divided up into two sections. We have something called my drive, and then we have something called computers. Now I don't have any files here. But if you use Google Drive on a computer and you make use of the app that you can install on that computer and you make use of syncing, then files that are synced from a computer, you'll be able to access under this computers section. So in terms of accessing your files, it's really straightforward. You can just simply tap or click on a file and it will open. Now, if we look next to the file name, we can see for each one, three dots. And if we click or tap on this, it brings up a menu and this gives us a ton of different options. So let's talk about each one of these. 
First of all, we can click on share and this allows us to share a file or folder with a specific person. So once we've tapped on this menu item, we can type in an email address, someone else who has Google Drive or G Suite, and we can share this file with that person. You're also able to review who has access to the file or folder and you'll see um, all of the accounts listed along the bottom here. The next menu item is add to starred. So if you remember earlier when we talked about that starred section, we can add a file to that section if it's a file that we use on a regular basis. So if I choose add to starred, docs tutorial will now appear in this section. So you're able to get to this file really quickly just by clicking on the start icon and you can do exactly the same with folders. You can add files or folders to that section simply by choosing add to start. And you can see now I've clicked on uh, this menu item again. It gives me the option to remove it from start. So if I tap on that again, it no longer appears in my start section. The third option allows us to make a file available offline. So what I'll do is I'll save a copy directly onto the iPad through this app, allowing you to make edits if you don't have an internet connection. So I can tap on make available offline. It's going to make that file available offline. And to get to my offline files, you might remember from before, I tap on this menu with the three lines and I can choose offline files. And that file now appears here. This is editable without an internet connection. If I don't want to make this file available offline, I can simply go back to this menu and turn that option off. Now the next menu item is for link sharing. So you might want to share a file with somebody and that person doesn't have a Google Drive account or sometimes it's easier just to share via a hyperlink. So what you can do is turn link sharing on you can see it now says link sharing on and below that it says copy link so this will give me a link it says this copy to my clipboard so i can type an email or i can use a, a messaging service and i can paste that hyperlink in and when they click on it they're able to have access to that file to download and use below that we have an option that says send a copy now this allows us to make use of the share sheet on your iPad. The share sheet allows you many more sharing options. So it allows you to share things via messages or AirDrop, Outlook, whatever apps you've got installed on your iPad um, that has sharing enabled, you can share via that app. So this gives you a whole host of other options. You don't just have to share a document via Google. So I have here a Google Docs document. It's a bit like Microsoft Word. And let's say I don't want to open it in Google Docs. I'd rather open it in another app that I have installed on my iPad. So if I click on the three dots, I can choose open in. It will take a moment to download this file. And what it's going to do is allow you to export this file to a different app to continue working in. So there's loads of different apps that come up along here. You can also save it to the files app which will put it in your iCloud drive. And there are some additional actions you can have based on what apps you have installed. So I have PDF Expert installed on this. So it's given me the option to convert this to a PDF file if that's what I want to do. The next few items on this menu give us some options in terms of managing the file. So I can rename the file. I can move it to a different location. If I have different folders and I want to put this in a different folder, I can choose move and I can select um, whereabouts I want it to go. I can duplicate a file, I can make a copy of it. And then two versions of this file will be in Google Drive. And then I can edit one and preserve the original if that's what you want to do. So you can view the file details by choosing details and activity. You can print this file if you have an AirPrint compatible printer and then you can remove the file, which it will actually not remove it. But what it will do is put it in the bin, which can be found in this menu over here. So let's have a look now at this colorful plus icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If I 
tap on this, this gives me the option to create or add something to Google Drive. So the first menu item is to create a folder. So I'm going to tap on that and create a folder. That folder now appears on my Google Drive account. If I click on the three dots, it has many of the options we talked about before in terms of sharing, copying, moving it around, renaming, etc. But one additional option we have that we didn't have before is change color. So you can actually change the color of the folder. And this is really useful if you're working with quite a lot of documents and quite a lot of folders. Color coordinating it can make it really easy to find something. So I want to choose red. And there you go. The folder turns red. If I go back to this plus menu here. The next item is called upload. And if I click on that, it gives me two options. I can upload from my camera roll. So if I tap on that, it'll bring up my camera roll. And from there, I can upload any of my photos or videos. The other option is browse. And what this does is this opens up a, a version of the files app, which is the inbuilt app on the iPad for managing your files. So stuff stored directly on the iPad or things stored in your iCloud Drive account. This all appears here. And what I can do is I can choose a file and then it will upload straight from my iCloud Drive or my iPad into Google Drive. Next, we have use camera. So what you can do is open up, you'll open up the camera app, allowing you to take a photo and that photo will automatically upload to Google Drive. And then we have icons for our three main productivity apps from Google. So we have Google Docs, Google Sheets and Google Slides. So if I tap on Google Docs, it'll open up the Google Docs app. It'll ask me to create a new document. And I can start working straight away. And whatever I create here will automatically save to Google Drive. You will need to have the Google Docs, Sheets and Slides apps installed to be able to make use of this. There is also another way of uploading to Google Drive without actually having the Google Drive app open. So when you install the app, it adds it to the share sheet and you can send things to Google Drive from other locations. So this is just the files app on my iPad. I have a file here called Excel background. And what I can do is if I click on the share icon for this file, and I scroll along, you can see the Google Drive icon appears. And if I click on that or tap on that, it allows me to upload to that account. And if you have multiple accounts, as you can see I do here, you can choose which account that gets uploaded to. So that's the end of this tutorial for the Google Drive app for the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll be back soon with another video.